The Goat Owls is back with score predictions and picks against the spread for every single NFL game in week six. We're here every Wednesday with this video. Last week went very well. Typically in week five is where I start heating up. So excited about week six. Got a lot of good picks for you guys. Let's Break them down. Thursday night football is a battle in the NFC West between the Niners and the Seahawks. I have the Niners winning 30-24 to in Seattle. Both teams with very disappointing outcomes last week, but I think both offenses getting going. It's The defenses stay disappointing. The lack of pass rush from the Niners is different than what we're used to, and Seattle's defense is kind of coming back down to earth the last couple weeks. They also have some key injuries, which plays a part uh, in this game, both pass they could be without both pass rushers. We know Nuosu's already. We know he's going to be out. Byron Murphy likely not going to be able to play. So a number of injuries. Tariq Woolen showed up on the injury report. So a number of injuries there. Niners typically play much better in prime time. They typically are a team that bounces back. So then they bounce back after. And honestly, they're out playing the Cardinals for most of that game. So they bounce back in this one. They get that offense going. Jordan Mason has a good game. They get the receivers going. Ayuk really stepped up last week. So I think they'll have no problem. This could be similar to the Jets game to start the year. And the Jets got a really good defense on top of it. The Niners were rolling in prime time football offense so it could be somewhat similar to that a reason for Seattle would be just a bad matchup last week the Giants defensive line is actually really really good led by Dexter Lawrence and that just could be their weakness because Seattle's usually you know typically very explosive on offense but that was just something that trumped their offense line and that offense you know so they couldn't really get much going the Niners don't have much of a pass rush outside Nick outside of Nick Bosa right now so maybe that creates them to have an explosive offensive outing and win the game. I think they'll be fine on offense. I just think the Niners, primetime Niners, end up scoring more. And for all those reasons, the Niners bouncing back. Offense should be solid, and Seahawks defense declining. And they have some key injuries. I have the Niners scoring their scoring over their total of 25 and a half, winning 30 to 20. Four. And here's some records for the last few weeks. And last week we did pretty well. Last week we'll have some updates on uh, our, our Twitter along the way as well. So make sure to follow us there. The London game on Sunday. I'm going to go with the upset. The Jags over the Bears 23-20. to I know it's not a huge upset, but they are underdogs by 2.5 points. Both teams starting to heat up. More so the Chicago Bears looked really good last week. The Jags offense has been getting going the last two weeks, not just last week. Uh, I would use the Jags as a teaser leg. That's about it when it comes to this one. Maybe you want to put throw a couple bucks on the Jags money line. I definitely could see that as well if you if your gut is telling you the same as you know mine's telling me in this one. But I could see it going either way. The Bears have been a little bit better throughout the years, early season so far. Uh, but you get some decent odds in a teaser with the Jags plus ten. But yeah, the reason I'm going with the Jags, you know, I typically am not one to follow the past or. I don't always follow trends from the past too, too much, but you know, give me some flashbacks here with the Jags. Last year, everyone was down on them, and then they go over to London, which they're typically pretty good, you know, considered their second home. They're used to traveling there, and they beat the Buffalo Bills, and they completely outplayed them. And if you remember, the Jags went on a good run, a good stretch, where they look like actually one of the very best teams in the AFC, and then we all know what happened. It kind of fell apart after that. Uh, you know, but I think we could see history repeat itself a little bit here. The Jags are actually already starting to get going. They played well enough to beat the Texans two weeks ago, and they and Trevor Lawrence, Christian Kirk, the offense. You know, Brian Thomas has been good all year, but Kirk even got going. Lawrence got going, uh, and they played well. And then last week they played awesome against a Colts defense as well. You know, scored a lot of points in that game. The defense has still struggled, but the pass rush kind of came alive a little bit last week with Hines Allen and Trayvon Walker for the Bears. Yeah, they're starting to pick it up. This is a, and they could definitely win this game. This is a much different matchup than who the Bears have been playing. Much different matchup. Panthers last week, you know, the Panthers have one of the worst pass rushes I've ever seen, but it helped the Bears kind of get going. The Jags defense isn't great, but that pass rush is different. Something, something different the Bears haven't seen in recent weeks as they were at home in Soldier Field where they have an advantage. So I do think Josh Hines Allen, Armstead, Walker could be getting after Caleb Williams uh, in the last couple teams that, that the Bears played. They both, the Rams and the Panthers both cover four teams, Jags, man coverage team, but they could play well because of that. Man coverage ends up being pretty predictable, so could they get going because of that? But because it's a totally different matchup for the Bears, even though I do love their defense to maybe present some problems for the for Trevor Lawrence and the Jags offense, Brisker's likely not playing. He didn't travel with the team, and he's been awesome. But different matchup for the Bears. 
History kind of repeats itself with the Jags starting to trend the right way, winning in London and turning their season around here, and they'll play in London next week against the Patriots. So uh, gut feelings tell me the Jags and the upset, but that game is uh, 50-50, in my opinion. Should be a fun one here uh, to see which team continues that streak and gets hot at the right time. We could have a good one here between the Cardinals and the Packers in Lambeau. I got the Packers winning 31-23. to They are favored by five, and I am strongly considering that one. I almost put bet that minus five, but they're a little sloppy right now. I feel like they're not at full strength or what they're, they're, they're not at the best of their abilities. We'll see if Alexander comes back, and the Cardinals are a good team. They're very sneaky. They played very well. They maybe caught some momentum against the Niners, so that's why it's maybe a little too early to back the Packers minus five, but I am considering it. Them. This is a noon game. Well, 1 p.m. Eastern noon for me, uh, which is different for the Cardinals. You know, you don't normally see that, especially if they're at home or if they're playing an NFC West team, and they got to go to Lambeau as maybe the wind's starting to pick up outside, some of the, the cool air starting to come in. So I do think the Packers have that a big advantage being at Lambeau where they were sloppy last week, but that was in L.A. against the Rams. So I do think that gives them an advantage. I don't trust the Cardinals' defense fully. I think you can run and throw on them. I think the Packers, who are pretty balanced, they get going. Receivers can catch the ball a little bit better this week. So I am confident with them. I got them winning 31-23. I do think Kyler Murray can do some damage. Again, we'll see if Jair Alexander is out. It's been a big one, a night and day difference between the Packers' defense with and without him, which actually makes sense because he's a star corner. Uh, but, yeah, Cardinals are a good team, probably better in their record. I do think the Packers are probably better in their record as well. Uh, I just think that the better team could win in multiple ways creating turnovers on defense. They lead the NFL in turnovers created right now. Up there with, uh, it's all NFC North teams, uh, three of them at the top there, Packers, Vikings, and Bears. But So I, I do like the Packers. This one I'm starting to convince myself once again. I had this marked down as a bet, minus five. And I'm like, mm, maybe too early to back the Packers because they're a little sloppy and the Cardinals are good. Back and forth on that one, that typically means, yeah, probably stay away. I got plenty of games to bet on. Uh, in this slate, you know, this week. So we'll take a look at those. Make sure to subscribe and turn notifications on so you don't miss any of our content. We got loads of it every week. Our weekly pick show for the week already up. I got a couple other guys with me. They make their picks, so check it out. Toughest game to pick on the week, in my opinion. Colts, Titans got the Colts winning 26-24. I am monitoring some injuries, though. Jonathan Taylor, a big one. And then who the hell is going to play quarterback for the Colts? Flacco, obviously a little more efficient consistent in the passing game, but Richardson's running ability could give the Titans a pretty good defense. Some issues like Malik Willis did when the Titans played, played against the Packers, you know, but I do like the Titans defense. We'll see if Jeffrey Simmons is back. Colts like how fast paced the offense is. It's a tough game plan for the Titans because even though they're off the bye, that's great, but you kind of have the game plan for two quarterbacks here. And again, they struggle with the running quarterback like Malik Willis. So th this could be a tough one. A lot of game planning to do. And the Colts defense is really struggling. I do think the Titans run game could win this one for them. But maybe a little more scoring this one than expected. I, I, will they be able to keep up with the Colts and win this one? That's kind of where my concerns are. I think it's possible. But I'm going to go with the Colts here. I, that really doesn't matter who's that quarterback. It's going to be a tough game plan for, for them either way. Jonathan Taylor could be a big one here if he plays or not. I would expect him to play, but we'll see. I'm going to take Indy in this one, doing just enough on offense. But, yeah, again, that's that's maybe the toughest one to pick. Probably the toughest one to pick this week. But Colts 26, Titans 24 is what I have at the moment. Texans versus Patriots. I got the Texans winning 24-13. to 13. You guys know I'm a big Drake May guy. I'm not super confident right away for him getting thrown in this bad situation, getting thrown in against a good Texans team. Texans typically do not blitz. When they played Caleb Williams, they blitzed the shit out of him, and it really threw them off. I think we could see something similar here against a bad offense line, against a raw rookie quarterback. I am very hyped about the future of Drake May. I'm not really that thrilled about the idea of it in this game right here. Yeah, the Texans could have a little less offense because Nico Collins, their star player, the best receiver in football right now, is out, but they'll be able to do enough. Nothing. Tri the Patriots defense is tough, but nothing tricky about it. Uh, C.J. Stroud will have a solid game. We'll see if Mixon comes back or not, but I, I have them winning 24-13. Should stay low scoring, but you do see a scenario where the Texans really get going, maybe score on defense. Um, seven's a lot of points, but I have them covering that, and I would use the Texans as a money line uh, part part of your parlay as a money line pick since they are they should be one of the 
more, more of the locks this week here. But Texans 24, Patriots 13 is what I got. Bucks versus Saints in an NFC South battle here. I got the Bucks winning 27 16. And I do have them covering that three that actually st- they, were, they started off as, I think, two and a half point underdogs. And then Carr was injured. I wish that Carr was not injured. He's playing because I want everyone to be full strength. But they probably would have stayed the Saints as favorites. And I would have been all over the Bucks plus whatever there because I think the matchup kind of favored them here. But it's going to be either Rattler or Hayner. Maybe the Saints are just kind of playing mind games with the Bucks. I don't think the quarterback matters too much. The Saints game is run the football to open up the pass. They need the run game to be working and involved. And what I mean about that, is, well, we know what working means, but involved, what I mean about that is they got to be in the game because if you're down big, you cannot run the ball. You know, they're relying on kind of getting a lead like they did the first couple weeks. And the Bucks defense, a little sus right now, but they stopped the run as long as Vita Vea is in there and he's been back for a couple weeks. They stopped the run at a pretty high level, so I think they slow. They're not going to take it away completely. They slow the Saints' run. They get a lead because they're explosive offense, even though I do like the Saints' defense. And that kind of forces whoever's at quarterback in some tough situations. And it's going to be a young quarterback either way, so Todd Bowles will blitz him a bit, and that will be a factor. The only worry I have here with the Bucks is... Offense has been awesome, incredible. Well, the worry is the pass defense. I'm not super worried about that in this game, but offense has been incredible. But they did slip up when they played the Broncos, which was odd. Broncos have a good defense. But if you look other than that, they haven't really played good defenses at all besides the Broncos. The Saints typically have, have a pretty good defense, especially in the red zone. So will that will this be like a Broncos-type game for the Bucs? I'm not counting on it, but that's something to watch, I suppose. But... Bad matchup for the Saints. You know, they got to get a big early lead or else they're in trouble in this game. So the Bucs uh, winning 27-16, covering that three uh, in New Orleans. Browns versus Eagles. I have the Eagles winning 20-13. to The Browns aren't tough to predict the score. They're going to score somewhere around in that range. The Eagles are actually a little tough, though, because... Their offense has been a little off. They just haven't been scoring many points outside of week one where it was in Brazil. The defense, you know, corners were falling all over the field. So guys were wide open great after the catch. And that was week one. After that point, offense, very underwhelming, not scoring a lot of points. And the Browns have a decent defense. It should be better than it's been. But the Eagles are getting some star players back. So I would not be surprised if the Eagles won this game like 31-13. to but it's a little too early to back them at the eight and a half point. I wouldn't touch it though, because the Browns are so terrible that they could they can lose by uh yeah, like I said, like a 31-13 game. But it, it's a lot of points for the Eagles given their offensive struggles. I don't think they're gonna struggle in this game. I think they'll get going a little bit, but Hurts hasn't really been right, especially with pressure in his face. There's been more of it compared to the, the, the past. You got Miles Garrett coming to town here, so I don't expect much scoring in this game. And when the Eagles do have beautiful looking drives, they drain the so much clock, and that's great because they don't give the other team a chance. So when they will have good-looking drives this game, I'd imagine they would look like that, leaving it a little low scoring here. But it's tough to predict the total in this game because, again, the Eagles, I could see a scenario. I'm sure you can too with them scoring 30-plus points. But this is my prediction right now. Eight and a half seems like a lot, but would not touch this one. The Browns got to get – I keep saying they got to get it going at some point, but it's it's hard to trust them right now. Offense line's bad. Watson's bad. I mean, the receivers really aren't that great. Defensively, they could be okay, but they're not living up to what how they look on paper. So very disappointing. One of the biggest disasters in football right now. But there's got to be a week where they look at least decent. Maybe it's this week. We'll see. Eagles 20, Browns 13. We got ourselves a ball game here between the Red Hot Commanders and the Ravens who are heating up two explosive, explosive offenses with two similar style quarterbacks, guys that can escape pressure, have elite athleticism, and can sling the ball as well. Uh, both are heating up. Lamar is really heating up in the passing game. People aren't giving him enough credit there. Jaden Daniels has been awesome, obviously. Uh, so we got a good one here. I'm gonna take with the Raven. I'm gonna take the Ravens 27-24. Being in Baltimore, even though it's a close trip, I said a short trip for for uh, for the Washington Commanders here. The home field advantage is still a thing, obviously, and Derrick Henry is unstoppable right now. I think he'll be an issue for the Commanders, but 27-24. 
the line looks like a trap. Vegas looks like they're setting a trap because they set it at six and a half, which seems like way too much given the commanders are playing just as good, if not better, in the Ravens right now. They're the hottest team in football right now. they got to keep it close. So they're daring you to do that, and they're keeping it just under seven. So it feels like Vegas thinks the Ravens are winning by seven, and they're daring people to take the big points for the commanders here. So that's interesting. But I am against the spread, it's just hard to pick against the commanders getting six and a half points. They realistically could win this game because they are deadly right now. The defense actually is getting better. I'm not fully going to trust either defense in this game. But the Ravens defense got to figure it out at some point because they have star players everywhere. Uh, but I'm going to trust Derrick Henry and Lamar Jackson to get it done at home. If this is in D.C., I might be leaning commanders, actually, because they're playing that well. Uh, but I'll take the Ravens in a close one. Tempted to go with the over in this one because it's all offense, no defense, super explosive offenses. But a lot of running the football and a lot of running clock in this one, which those types of games, it makes it scary. They want you to bet the over and they want that you know, the team's draining clock. And that's what teams are going to be trying to do because they know how good each other is with having lengthy drives. So we want to give them less opportunities for those. So um, really this game is going to be about who gets the ball first and who who uh, gets a stop first, who has that big lengthy drive and takes the lead first. That It could actually be what it's about here. But wouldn't touch it in terms of any lines here, but I got the Ravens pulling it off in a battle it's gonna be a fun one a great defensive matchup between the chargers and the broncos the broncos are on fire right now but i have the chargers pulling it off 17 to 16 a squeaker here obviously going to be a defensive game the chargers coming off the bye is what is huge here that is huge because the injuries they had but kind of sitting back and trying to figure out what the broncos are doing differently why they're having success that's huge if they weren't coming off the bye I'd probably go Broncos, who are on fire right now. So, the, again, the bye, getting some guys you know back that weren't healthy before. Huge for the Chargers here. I also like Harbaugh lives for these types of games, those close, tight, defensive games. Who could squeak it out in the end? Who could do enough to manage the time of possession? Harbaugh lives for these games. Uh, and they, I think that gives them advantage as well. Both defenses playing great. The Chargers were awesome last time we saw them on defense with guys out against the Chiefs of all teams. Broncos, uh, you know, didn't play the best offensive team against the Raiders last week, so it was expected for their defense to go to work. This could be similar to the Jets game for the Broncos, which kind of came down to the wire here. I'm oddly confident with the Chargers, and I say that because the Broncos are on fire, and it could come down to who has the ball last, who could kick, who could kick that last field goal. So the Broncos very well could win. I just something about being off that bye in a hardball type game. This is his type game. They pull it off here. Herbert makes that extra play. Herbert versus Knicks, two Oregon quarterbacks. The veteran makes that extra play, wins the game here. I think Dobbins gets back on track, gets a, does a little damage here, but being able to prepare extra week for this game is huge, but we know this game's going to be close, very close. The Broncos are getting three points. I was surprised about that line, so maybe the Chargers are kind of thinking around that. Maybe they're a little confident. Uh, the, or Vegas is thinking, you know, where I'm at with the Chargers here, but it's going to be a close game. The Broncos could win that game, so you can actually bump that, bump that up in a teaser, get them around plus ten, a little less if you're confident, and that seems like a pretty good pick uh, for the Broncos there. But I'm going Chargers 17, Broncos 16, and what should be a pretty good game. Steelers and Raiders should be a similar game to that one we just talked about. I like the under in this game. It's a little bit higher than the Chargers Broncos, and the Bron you know, Broncos kind of took off offensively. Uh, last game and so I feel a little more comfortable with this one staying under 36 and a half the Steelers covering winning 16 to 10 could be a trap for the Steelers because when they are road favorites in the past they aren't they typically aren't too solid and the Raiders switching quarterbacks does it could it change a bit O'Connell gets the ball a little quicker than Minshew I'm still not counting on the Raiders doing enough here Christian Wilkins is out they're a disaster. They don't know who, which quarterback they even want to pick, it feels like, even though they're going to go with O'Connell. No running game. The Steelers' defense is great, but it feels like you can run the ball on them. The Raiders can't run the ball. They're worse in football. So, uh, But I'm not trusting the Steelers' offense a whole lot. I think Max Crosby gets after them. I mean, they couldn't really get anything consistent going against the Cowboys' defense. So uh, I don't see them scoring a ton of points this one, but doing enough. They, they are the better team in general, then you factor in the Raiders' current messy situation. They're definitely the better team. Christian Wilkins out. Uh, Steelers win 16-10, to but this one definitely should stay under. Should be a very low-scoring game here. A fun one here, the Lions versus the Cowboys, and this is one of my favorites this week. I love the Lions this week, and that that 
Could be a little risky because the Cowboys are starting to heat up. They're definitely starting to play better on both sides of the ball. Even the defense picking up the last couple weeks, but they haven't played the Lions recently. Like everything's trending in the right direction for the Cowboys. Everyone realizes that. Vegas realizes it with this three point spread here, but they have they're gonna take a step back in this one. They have not seen the Lions yet. I know the Lions defense looked a little questionable last time we seen them, but I think a big reason the Cowboys offense is getting going is they're able to run the ball better right now. Rico Dottles getting going, but I don't think in this game, the Lions run defense is really good. That offense might it very well could be the best in football. I'm still fully not trusting the Cowboys defense, even though it'll get there under Mike Zimmer. They have injuries at both the star pass rusher positions. The Lions are going to score in this game. They can run all over them. I think they can. I, I prefer them to run the ball more than pass the ball, but I think they can do both. I think Laporta has a breakout game as well. Both running backs go bonkers. They scored 34 points. They got a nice little rest off the bye. This is and they want revenge from last year. This is their type of game right here. They're going to score. They're going to score plenty of points. But I know the scary part. Lions defense looked questionable last time. Uh, you know they they play and the Cowboys typically have an explosive offense every year, especially at home. Even though they've been better away this year. And Lions have some struggles stopping slot receivers this year. CeeDee Lamb could play outside or in the slot. I, I bet you they put him in the slot a bit more, and he is very productive. But, again, I think they'll be one-dimensional. I like the Lions' run defense. Hutchinson will get after Dak. Dak's been making some questionable decisions. His offensive line typically is great. It's not great this year. So, I like I love the Lions in this game. Everything is pointing me towards the Lions. I like them minus three. I would use them in a parlay as, as a money line pick as well. Matchup says Lions. They're one of the best teams in football, best offense in football. I'm going to be surprised, as you can tell, if they, if they fall short. I, even though I think the Cowboys are a good team, they're training in the right direction. Just too many injuries, bad matchup. Give me Detroit. Got them winning 34-20 to 20 in this one. We likely have an offensive battle in the NFC South here. It might not be that much of a battle. I could see the Falcons winning big, but I got them winning 31-23. But this matchup favors the Panthers you know, for them more than their matchup last week against the Bears. Falcons are much better than the Bears, but not for the Panthers. The Panthers rely on offense being a being a thing in the game, and they can be pretty explosive, but against the Bears' top defense, it was a non-factor, so they were a non-factor. The Falcons' defense is struggling, so I, especially against the run, so I do think Hubbard and company, you know, in the pass game as well, Dalton, they'll be able to have some effect there, you know, some some production in this game. So they actually could stick in this game, but they're going to be trying to play keep up with an explosive offense that is only getting better. Kirk Cousins was awesome last week, so was London Mooney. They just have not been able to get the run game going, but the Panthers can't stop the run. The Falcons will get the run game going. Bijan has a big game. Got to hit the hole better, but he has a big game in this one, so the Panthers will be trying to play keep up. Can the Falcons take the run game away from them? Then they'll easily win the game. That'll be the factor here. So wouldn't bet on it. With that line, even though at first glance it might feel like the Falcons could win big, and they could, but I do like the Falcons in a teaser plus three uh, if they do let this one slip away because the Panthers' offense, it should stay real close because Kirk Cousins is going to have all time, all day to throw. Again, they can actually get the run game going in this one, and the defense could even play a, a little bit better here, but I do like the Falcons. The Panthers are dealing with some injuries on the offensive line as well, so the Falcons should take care of business uh, in this one, but yeah, you, some people may view it as a trap game because the Panthers might be able to score here at home uh, against the Falcons. But give me Atlanta on this one, and they keep rolling. Bengals and Giants on Sunday night football in New York. The Giants are an improving team. They shocked the world against Seattle last week, and the Bengals cannot close out games, and they can't play defense. So that says the Giants should be, you know, maybe could win this game. They could be effective on offense, and that defensive line is damn good. But Thibodeau currently week to week with an injury, so that's a tough blow. I like the Bengals figure. The offense is already figured out. Offense is awesome. They'll be. I know the the problem had, had is that they haven't seen the Giants' defensive line, and the Bengals' offense line's actually been playing all right, which we're not used to. But can it go back to normal in a game like this? Certainly, maybe the offense takes a hit, and that could favor the Giants because they should be able to score enough points. And if the defensive line does that damage like they did last week against an explosive offense. Uh, but the Bengals' offense is a different animal here. I think they do enough. Defensively, they're bad. They're worse stopping the run. than They're bad both at both, but they're worse stopping the run. The Giants really aren't too efficient in the run game this year. I know Tracy got going last week, and it was unexpected for Seattle. You know, again, Thibodeau hurt for the Giants. They could win this game, but I'm going to go with the Bengals this one, 27-23. Not one I can touch. It could, could go either way. Um the over looks appealing. It's like the last game we talked about. It looks appealing, but there could 
you know, the, the key against the Bengals running the ball, so that could create some running clock. And the Bengals, there is a scenario where the it's the best defensive line they've seen. Maybe they don't do as much offensively. So probably just stay away from this game in general. But I have the Bengals winning 27-23, actually closing this one out. In Monday night football between the Bills and the Jets, it's not one I would put money on, but I think it's going to be a very close game. I'm going to take the Bills. It's interesting because the Jets obviously did just fire Robert Salah, so that could light a fire beneath them and then and really get them going. We see it every single year, all the time, happen to teams. So Jets could win because of that, also because they can get the run game going because the Bills aren't too great stop and run, and also because their pass defense is something, and, and the Bills really haven't seen that yet. They haven't really played any good pass defenses besides the Texans, and they were kind of slowed down with in, in that one. So the Jets could win. Just tough to pick them in this game. I, you know, the Jets' pass defense is good, but I do think the Bills will have success on the ground with Josh Allen and James Cook. They'll get after a banged up Rodgers, very banged up Aaron Rodgers. He just can't really get on the same page with, with his receivers. The offensive line's playing a lot worse without Morgan Moses. So for those reasons, I got a side towards the Bills, but there are reasons the Jets could win at home, primetime football. It should stay really close. So I'll have a one-point squeaker here, 20 to 19. Would not touch that one. Uh, you know, I'd, I'd bet on some rushing props probably. We'll have you covered on Twitter for that. But you see my picks against the spread for the week touched on those throughout this video check out our weekly pick show if you want more perspective on games we have power rankings up we have my locks video around the corner we have a lot of shorts that have been rolling out as well so join us like subscribe to notifications on check out our sponsor liquid iv code go for a percentage off check out our twitter very important we'll always uh keep it in touch with you guys there but that is going to do it for this one thanks for watching goodbye